Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, talking about CPU overclocking. Now, if you want to see the written version of this video, you can find a link to my website in the video description. Here, specifically, we're focusing on a few chapters for this video. One is what is overclocking, how does it work, the benefits and the risks, because there are risks involved. And if you don't understand what happened between this section here and you're still kind of stuck to understanding it, then I'll simplify with an example, kind of like an analogy. So let's dive in. So the concept of overclocking is actually super simple. Uh, to overclock, two main things are happening. One is that you're adjusting the frequency. So that is the clock speed of the processor. So let's say, we'll just use Intel as an example for the rest of this video, okay? But AMD can do this as well. But basically to adjust the frequency, you're adjusting the clock speed. So let's say on the box, you're buying an Intel processor, it says four gigahertz. You can maybe increase it to 4.2 gigahertz, making it faster. But to do that, you usually have to increase the voltage of the processor because the processor runs on electricity. That means you have to push in more voltage, more electricity, However, not all processors can overclock. That's very important to note. One example from Intel, it's not the only example, but if you look at the i9 14900K processor from Intel, the K represents that it can overclock. So Intel likes to use the letter K to represent overclocking. It's not the only example, but that's one very popular term that Intel uses, the letter K. So before you buy a process and just think you can just take it out of the box and overclock it, don't. Make sure you check the specifications. Can your processor that you're looking to buy allow overclocking in the first place? But you wanna consider the risks, which we'll talk about shortly. How do you actually overclock? Um, there's two ways to get this done. We'll talk about the BIOS first. That's like the, uh, for, for the non-tech savvy, that's like the pre-boot menu. The, the menu you're booting into like the motherboard and the CPU before Windows or your operating system even boots up. In there, there's a couple ways to typically get it done. And that's where you can adjust the overclocking uh, specifications that you're trying to achieve. Some have pre-made profiles. So you might just see like, I don't know, Intel utilization tool, whatever, low profile done, it'll just overclock for you. This is risky, especially with the 13th and 14th gen uh, Intel chipsets because out of the box, a lot of motherboard manufacturers are preloading overclocking um, profiles, which are pushing too much voltage and actually literally killing and burning out the CPU, okay? That doesn't really happen with AMD. They have, they have a much more stable uh, performance in the last couple of years, but that's usually what's happening. So it's best to go into your BIOS settings and make sure it's set to like a safe limit. But yeah, pre-made profile is usually risky. Why do they do that? Because each mother motherboard manufacturer wants to show that their motherboard can make your processor faster than the competing one. But what they're doing at such a dangerous level that in some cases it burns out the CPU. Okay, so just a little tidbit No. However, you can also adjust it manually, okay? You can adjust the frequency and the voltage manually. You don't have to use pre-made profiles. Regardless of which method you use, and regardless, even if you do it with AMD, which is usually safer, you, you wanna experiment. So you don't wanna just like push the voltage by a crazy obscene amount, by like an extra 30, 40%. You wanna do like little increments. So increase the voltage a tiny bit, adjust the frequency a little bit, and then do some stress tests. There's like free tools like uh, Cinebench, I believe. And then when you're doing those uh, testing, have a tool like I use HW monitor, uh, which is short for hardware monitor, and just leave it on the side of your window and you can observe the temperature and, and is it getting too much electricity, is it getting too hot? If it's not, then increase the voltage and the frequency a little bit tiny bit more, run the stress test again and observe. And the reason you wanna do it manually and not look at what people say on online forums is because your RAM, your motherboard, your CPU, your power supply, blah, 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 all those combination of things are gonna be very different from other people. Chances are everyone having the exact same thing in the exact same BIOS version and Windows update version and driver updates, it's very slim. So you wanna do your testing on your own, try not to follow what other people do because it might work for them, it doesn't mean it'll work with your compatible hardware. Okay, so what are you actually adjusting in the BIOS or any other utility tool to overclock? Because we'll talk about the second utility tool method shortly. But I just want to get this basic concept out of the way first. When you're overclocking, you're just in the multiplier because that number multiplies by the external clock. How do you understand what the external clock and multiplier is? That's usually somewhere in the specifications of your processor. If you threw away the box, you can usually look it up online. Like for example, my Intel processor for my gaming PC is an i7-4790K, which is 10 years old now. Intel still has all that documentation on their website. So if I ever want to understand what my external clock is and my multiplier, I can just look it up there. And I'll explain why that's important, okay? So uh, the multiplier is a number you're multiplying by the external clock. So for example, let's say we have a processor with the, the base clock speed of 4.8 gigahertz. Well, how did that come about? By default, the processor set a multiplier to 20, 
and the external clock is 240 megahertz. If you take your external clock speed, which again, all this information is on the specifications of your processor, and you multiply 20 by 240, it gives you 4,800 megahertz, which a very simple way of saying it in modern terms is 4.8 gigahertz, okay? But what if you wanted to overclock it and you wanna do that in small increments, you would change the multiplier by one because you wanna do that in small gradual steps. Well, in this example, if you want to overclock, you change the multiplier from 20 to 21. You're increasing it by just one. The external clock does not change, okay? It's still 240 megahertz. You're not changing that. But by overclocking, you're doing 21 times 240. It turns into 5,040 megahertz, which equals 5 gigahertz. So in this example, by overclocking by one multiplier, you increased your clock speed by 240 megahertz, which honestly, between 4,800 and 5,040, it's saying like nothing. It's just peanuts, really. But that is the basic concept of what you'd be adjusting. Okay, so I didn't want to delete any of this. Um, delete? Ugh, I'm, not, I'm not a computer. This is not a computer. I didn't want to erase any of this while I talk about the other uh, portion of how to get this done. So I already talked about you can do this stuff in the BIOS. Okay, that's pretty standard stuff. Intel and AMD will also have uh, utility tools that you can do it in the operating system. So you boot into Windows and you can actually adjust this stuff here. And it's a very clean, easy to use interface. I've used it with Intel, I haven't with AMD. So basically Intel's tool is called Extreme Tuning Utility. AMD's is called Ryzen Master Utility. These are tools that you open up in your operating system and adjust the clock speed right there on the fly in the operating system. So this is a, a very good method to quickly adjust the multiplier, run a stress test, observe if it's getting too hot or not. And if it's not, adjust the multiplier in here quickly again run your stress test, like you're not having to shut down and go into the BIOS every single time. This is a much faster uh, method to get it done. Hey, so sorry to disturb you, but a quick word from, well, me. So if you are enjoying the content so far, I'm happy you are. Maybe consider subscribing to my channel. It literally helps my channel grow. Not only that, YouTube is not something I do as a full-time commitment. It's something I have to do on weekday after hours in the late evenings and on weekends. Some of the technology lesson videos that I create on my channel, it's me spending time invested to create those lectures and make sure the best information is provided to you. So maybe consider hitting the super thanks button. It really helps me out in funding this channel and some of the content I continue providing to you. So with that said, let's continue on with what you were watching. All right, so what are the benefits? This should be pretty given, but in some cases not. You'd be surprised. It depends on the situation. So by overclocking, it's going faster. Faster is good, right? Well, let, let's just see. You do have to consider one thing though, is that there's a trade-off of it costing more. If you were to look at two processors very similar in specifications and base clock speed, the one that allows overclocking is most likely gonna be more expensive than the one that does not. So you have to think to yourself, okay, I'm gonna overclock. Do I really need it? And what's the future benefit there? By going faster, this can help with some really heavy intensive uh, items and tasks. For example, video editing, um, your graphic design can get very intensive, especially with all those crazy amount of pixels you're working on certain graphic designs. Better multitasking because you have a, a plethora of programs running in the background. Maybe even gaming. I put a question mark here because this is very situational dependent. Because gaming relies on the graphics card. I will definitely make a series on graphic cards in the future, but it's, it's good here because <clears throat> for CPU bottlenecks. So if you have a processor that's old, it's much easier to upgrade your graphics card than your CPU because by changing your CPU, you gotta change your motherboard potentially. So if you wanna keep your CPU and motherboard intact, but games are running slow because the CPU is a bottleneck and your graphic card is fine, overclock the CPU. Another thing that a lot of people don't talk about but I think is very important is less e-waste. Um, we really need to think about the environment. It's just getting out of hand. Think about saving money. You know, your computer that's aging just overclock it. If you're looking to get rid of it anyway, this is a great time to experiment, tinker with it, and you might actually get it to run faster and longer. So instead of buying a new computer, you can use it to save money. Okay, so overclocking sounds too good to be true, right? Well, that's because it is. Uh, there are risks involved with it. So when you're basically increasing the voltage and the frequency, two main big culprit items come up. The first is that you're using more electricity, obviously by using more voltage. And this could lead to more crashing. If there's too much electricity and voltage being pumped into the processor, it could lead to the processor activating kind of like a self-defense mechanism and just shutting down and crashing and rebooting your computer. Um, it's also more money because more electricity is more money. Another thing is the power supply limit. Processors like five, 10 years ago didn't use a lot of electricity. Now they use quite a bit out of the box. So, sorry, and more power to your uh, CPU, you might hit the limits of your power supply, which means you might have to buy a new power supply. 
uh, it's also generating more heat. Um, so what this means that the stock fan, the fan that comes with the processor, might not be good enough to keep it that cool. Now there are third party air cooling solutions that are like kind of fan based sort of, but with heat sinks and stuff, you can buy, they're relatively cheap, they last longer in the long run, um, and they're easy to install. They, they look big and intimidating, but they're actually really easy to install. Another solution people have tried to experiment with online uh, is AIO, uh, but this has been extremely overkill. It's usually better for a graphics card that generate a lot more heat than CPUs usually do. Also, it's intimidating for a lot of people. How do you get this big honking thing to go in my case and you know, airflow and everything working nicely? In a lot of cases, when you buy it, you, you realize you don't need it. It's just wasted money. Overclocking can also reduce the CPU lifespan. So by overclocking, if your processor could last 10 years and you're overclocking and you use it daily, could it reduce the lifespan to five years? Potentially, there's a higher chance of reduced lifespan. Now, how much will it reduce the lifespan by is unknown. No one can know that. Uh, I know people that have running processors and computers, they, they use it like an hour or two max a day, if that, sometimes never. And their processor died after four or five years with no overclocking, no heavy usage. But there's other people that can run overclocking and make their computer last seven, eight years. Basically, you don't know how much you're gonna get out of your processor, but if your processor could have lasted 10 years versus overclocking, it might last seven years, four years, six months. Nobody knows, but yes, it does reduce the lifespan of the processor. Also, despite some of these processor uh, companies like Intel allowing um, overclocking and specifically mentioning it in their advertisement, the second you overclock it yourself, you're voiding the warranty potentially. So just keep that in mind. If you still have a warranty of a year or two, maybe don't overclock until after that period because you might be voiding the warranty otherwise. Okay, so I promised a way to simplify with an analogy. I'm gonna use overclocking with the CPU against bodybuilding. You're like, what? This guy's crazy. Where's the dislike button? Let me, let me dislike this video. Hold on just a second. Hold on. I am crazy, but trust me, this is the best example I could think of. I'm a fan of bodybuilding and technology. I'm like, this actually works out an alignment perfectly. So for the CPU, we're gonna use maybe your new computer. Uh, you got pre-built or you're buying a new processor for your existing computer and upgrading it. And we're gonna go through the stages that they kind of align up to really understand overclocking. So when you buy a new processor, it's out of the box, it's fresh, it's super fast. You've never realized it could be this good before. You're happy and satisfied. With bodybuilding, you know, when you hit your genetic limit, you're like on top of the world, you look like a god. So everything's great. Bodybuilding and out of the box, you're loving it. However, on the CPU side, eventually you hit more loads. Applications become more uh, intensive on the CPU. Operating systems become more bloated like Windows. It slows down the performance of the CPU. Online benchmark scores. Maybe you look at other people with the same processor and their online benchmark scores are higher than yours. And you get a little bit you know, jealous there, which is not a good thing, but it happens. In the bodybuilding side, you eventually hit your muscle building limit. You can't have 38 inch arms. Like it's just not gonna happen. It's not physically possible. No matter how tall you are, you will hit a limit. Also in the world of competing, uh, competing bodybuilders, there's a lot of pro bodybuilders that are just stacked up on PEDs. So eventually you're you know, comparing yourself to online benchmark scores. So what do you do in either world? In the world of CPU, you're gonna overclock. However, by overclocking, you're introducing a lot of heat and voltage, which leads to underlying issues, which might not be that easily visible and degrading the lifespan of your processor. In the world of bodybuilding, if you want to get super competitive, especially in the pro stage and get your pro card, you're going to most likely take PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, which will make you like huge. Um, but there could be underlying health issues. Some people have baldness, they have acne. Some people don't. They don't see any of those problems, but they have underlying heart issues is the biggest one. Kidney, liver, uh, blood, bad blood results, all these underlying health issues. Will you live to be 80 years old? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on how many PEDs you use. Is your body gonna handle those PEDs well or not? Exact same thing with overclocking. Will you live as long as you could have? Probably not, but no one will ever know how much. And that is how it compares perfectly. And that's pretty much it. I hope this is all super simplified and it's easy to understand overclocking now, whether you wanna do it or not. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out my social links and website link in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, it literally helps my channel grow. And thanks for watching.